So hi everyone, welcome today to the uh, today's edition of the Orcs Foodie Podcast. Very pleased today to welcome a uh, very um, well distinguished person in the uh, area of venture and capitalism and, and venture capitalist working, uh, Tim Draper from Draper Associates, a seed stage venture capital firm that Tim founded, among many other um, things that you do, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but just for a second, just get ready for some of these key investments that I found out about you. <laughs> uh, Hotmail, Skype, Tesla, SpaceX, Twitter, DocuSign. I mean, that's ridiculous. So <laughs> some of the biggest companies in the world now, and obviously there are many others. And Tim, it's great to have you on. Thank you very much for doing this. I appreciate it. Yeah. And um, most of those investments we made were, you know, when we start, we started with a company, it was you know, two guys and a dog. Um, it's yeah. now now they're big, huge monster successes. I just I just had a tour of the Tesla factory. I couldn't believe. Oh wow! It. There are more robots than people there, but boy, it's <laughs> it's enormous, and they pound out these cars. Uh, it's definitely the kind of car you want. It's they're they're just beautiful and everyone's going to be exactly the same they they really do an outstanding job and really high quality all the way around wow. um but that was fun because when it started it was just you know martin eberhard with a, a vision and then eventually um elon musk came in and um and supercharged the company but wow yeah and that does happen it, you know you you get something started with an idea and you say, and if it's a big enough idea, um, you can get it going. And then um, maybe Draper Associates will. <laughs> yeah, <fund you. laughs> no, definitely. Well, um, something, a few things I'd obviously like to to ask about and your opinion on various things. But but uh, interesting to for some of our listeners to understand how you first got into um, investing in startups and how it all began really <laughs> well it's um it was a little easier for me my grandfather was the first silicon valley venture capitalist and wow. my father was a pioneer in venture capital um he put together the first uh limited partner general partner relationship uh ever i think and wow. uh, and he um he really did um build a whole community out here in Silicon Valley. And so when I got started, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. But I realized I I had more of the um the personality of um someone who who would want to start a lot of things <laughs> instead of really get one started and do it right. And so I was better at being a a venture capitalist and uh and my father had left the business when I got started. Um, there was a small, um, there were a few family investments um, that uh, were in something called a small business investment company. Okay. And I was able to go and take over that SBIC and borrow $6 million from the federal government. And which was three times what the companies were worth. Wow. And um, and with that six million dollars, I was able to build a record. Uh, I was able to um, uh, raise another fund on that track record. And then I was uh, off to the races with Traper Brilliant. Associates. And then we built a, a long. Long history with Draper Fisher Jurvetson, and uh, mm. we built that up to be an extraordinary business. We were the number one venture firm in the world from 1999 to 2003, maybe. Um, and then I added too many partners, and <laughs> we and we sort of lost our way. And I um, I decided to spin out and start over with Draper Associates again. And since then, um, it has freed me to try new things. So I started Draper University, uh, of Heroes for Entrepreneurs. 
Oh, wow. I Great. started um, a show called Meet the Drapers. Now there are 40 million viewers of Meet the Drapers. Uh, and the show is like a shark tank, but uh, but it's real. We're, we're really interviewing entrepreneurs that we've met for the first time. No Hollywood attached. Oh, wow. That's brilliant. And uh, and there is a uh, an investment for the winner, winner of each show and the winner of the whole competition. Uh, so it uh, we're getting a lot of great entrepreneurs applying, and uh, we're in our seventh season, and and it's generally mostly Drapers that are the judges. Okay, my, my dad's in it. My sister, um, sometimes my kids <clears throat> are a part of it. Uh, but the um, the guest judges for this next coming season that's going to start in September um, include uh, the biggest guru in the world, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. One thing I did want to ask as well: um, what is it that what is it that excites you about an investment? opportunity so are they only like deal breakers that you kind of look for and say i mean i imagine there are so <laughs> yeah yeah so the thing that excites me um is that unique entrepreneur that comes in and um, comes into our office or a zoom call and it just is breaking out of their chest what they're going to be doing they're so excited <laughs> yeah. about it that they um, they can't even control themselves. They're so happy and excited, and so part of that enthusiasm is is uh, what I look for. What I um, other venture capitalists might be fine with, but is not a good fit for me, is a business that um, that anyone else can start. Uh, so if you do a, a if somebody comes to you and says, uh, we're going to do, um, well, today it's like AI for this or AI for that. Mm -hmm. um, if it looks like it's something that they've got a real technological edge and they've got a real, really interesting thing going on, um, then we'll take a deep look. If it's something where... Um, anyone can do it like we're going to use chat gpt to do this uh, yeah. um and we do a google search and there are a thousand people doing the same thing then we don't want to participate so we're we're really looking for that outlier that that entrepreneur who's doing something very unusual mm. and if it works it's really a big deal yeah uh and maybe it has uh, a couple of levels to it like it starts out as a, a business to business opportunity and then they flip to the consumer or uh starts out uh just delighting a few customers and then the customers become the sales force uh or or it's just some really interesting new technology that uh if it yeah uh, if they can bring that technology to the consumer and the consumer can do really interesting things with it, then um, then we'd be interested. Oh, excellent. And then um, <laughs> in terms of um, something else, it's actually this, this sort of question's evolved over the last few um, things of these I've done, but um, were there any sort of crucial mistakes that you've made um, in your career where you've, you've really yeah, learned most, from it? And... <laughs> most of my mistakes are are failures to act. Um, okay. My, um, I, I did not invest in um, Netflix. Okay. And I didn't do it because I said, wait, you're going to be sending DVDs through the U.S. mail. Um, yeah. You know, this makes no sense because we're yeah. all going to be streaming in two years. And he said, people aren't ready for streaming, but they will be ready for it in two years. You know, yeah. and he, he said, this is how we get customers. And I didn't buy it. I didn't jump yeah. in. And then um, I also missed LinkedIn for, uh, you know, another stupid reason. I thought um, 
that one group of people would not want to be on LinkedIn because they would be one group would just be barraged with LinkedIn yeah. requests and other groups would never see any action from anybody but their mother. That's what I thought was going to happen, but I, I missed the boat. So those were two, both reads that I read Hastings and read Hoffman okay. that, where I really blew it. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and mostly, uh, yeah, I've, I've made mistakes by investing in companies I shouldn't have, but in those cases, I lose one time my investment. If I, um, if I make a, an error and don't invest in something mm. that could be a really big winner, uh, I can, that, that can be really bad. I can lose a yeah. hundred times yeah. on my money or something. Yeah, I can uh, understand that the, the, it's a, a, a close the close cut thing, isn't it? Yeah, I remember actually. This is a little, tiny little story. It's just come to my head. Actually, my my best friend at university did a dissertation in his final year, and his project was about um, that how Amazon was going to be a failure. This, this is the mid '90s, so when it started with the book thing, <laughs> so he's still got it now as well, and I do remind him of it. <laughs> I've not brought that up on here before, actually. But that's just like I've just thought I'd tell you that one there. So needless I, to say, know, I have an I have an Amazon story, and Amazon had just gone public, and it was you know valued at I don't know maybe a hundred million dollars or something. And I was on the panel with um, the venture capitalist who had backed Amazon, and I said, "Wow." You guys backed a winner. That is such an amazing company, Amazon. Mm. I I ordered something and four days later I got it and it was fan. It all worked perfectly. And I said, that is such a great company. And I said it on stage. I never bought any Amazon. Uh. I, I should have just bought the stock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew. I knew yeah. this thing was great. It was an amazing service. Anyway, that's, that's a good way to invest. Is if you love the service, yeah, definitely, pretty good idea to invest. Yeah, in. I can imagine that's yeah. a good one. And um, another thing as well. Um, so sometimes you talk about life after, uh, you know, the world after nine eleven and the world after things like that. I think there's been a world after probably the pandemic and yeah, what's happened then. And um, it's just like interested to understand what your what that period was like. For, for you as an investor and 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 really um funny actually because uh in many respects i well from my personal point of view as well uh last year was unbelievable boom i was hardly have well i was working but hardly had to do much to get roles to come on in fact i was turning business away in some respects and now it's feels mm -hmm. a little bit different to this year i just wonder what your perspective was you know is on the I suppose the last three years and you know what how you sure. see things you know um when the pandemic started um and they said you've got to be locked in place i had just been traveling around the world and i was exhausted and mm. so it kind of i i <laughs> thought wow this works for me okay i'm happy to be locked in yeah for a week or whatever, but I thought locking us down is not a good idea. Nice. And I and I I I said so on Twitter, and I got bombed with Did Twitter you? people saying, "You don't understand. This yeah. is so bad." Blah, you blah, don't blah, care. Blah, blah. La la la. Yeah. You don't <laughs> care about people and whatever else. And uh, and and then uh, I adjusted to it by doing what I did today, which is. I closed, I went to my home office and I closed, I kissed my wife goodbye. I come in and I, I say, okay, here's my day. I'm going to mm. be here. And I, everything's going to be on zoom instead of meeting people in person. And I, I was fortunate in that I was um, a seed investor in Skype mm. and on their board. And I was on the first Skype video call and we had done video calls many times i i created a meet tim draper uh or a uh, t uh pitch tim draper on your billion dollar idea competition on okay. skype okay uh, to try to promote skype video a long mm. long time ago 
And then I, I was a part of this. Uh, we did a business plan competition uh, with Cisco where uh, where we did use their telepresence machines. And those were quite extraordinary. Mm. Um, and, and we spent about 15 hours and we had people from almost every time zone in the world yeah. come pitch us. And it was a really exciting day and all that. Uh, and then I was starting to, I was using Skype. I was using Zoom um, on a pretty regular basis with entrepreneurs. So mm. uh, the pandemic made me just switch completely straight to Zoom for business. And um, to keep myself from going crazy, I'd go out. Um, I, I was walking a lot. Yeah, I'd walk, walk my dogs. I'd walk, walk, walk. I just tried to get out. Um, it was very depressing to go to walk downtown because the downtown areas were completely um, empty. But uh, I noticed a few entrepreneurial restaurants started to build out outdoor dining. Yeah, and I thought, huh. So people, no matter what you do to sl slap people down, they get creative and mm. good things happen. A good yeah. entrepreneur will come up with great ways to adapt to this new world, whatever it might be. And uh, the pandemic did get the world to go more. Um, in some ways, it um, it forced us all, all to use video. Yeah. Uh, conferencing and it moved everything moved very um quickly that there i could accomplish a lot mm. um i decided since other people because of the pandemic were just locking themselves down and wearing masks and you know putting their heads in the sand yeah um i felt like i had to work three times as hard so i yeah did. yeah and so then now we're coming out of the pandemic and it's sort of hard to get people back into the office. Yeah. But they're slowly but surely realizing that that was actually a great way to work. And the uh, I I think uh, we were accomplishing a lot more when we were in the office. Mm, yeah. Um, although although uh, we're staying more caught up when we're at home. So yeah. I, I kind of feel like one day a week, at home is not a bad thing because you can do all your email and yeah do a bunch of zoom calls and then um the other days get back to the office so you can uh uh work with each other come up do brainstorming and and get the various people in the office doing the things that they're best at yeah uh and assigning tasks and and fulfilling tasks yeah i, th I think it yeah, i think it's important for everybody to be together yeah. on a mission no i couldn't agree more and um yeah we have some i have a similar thing now i'm at home i'm, I'm working at home but it's in the days in, in the office are the days i come back full of ideas and inspiration and you hear certain things in the office and that you don't hear you know on a specific call and i couldn't agree more i feel like you know everyone should be getting back towards that definitely um yeah. So um, another question I'd like to ask you is uh, what what do you think founders often get wrong when approaching financing or funding? And what do you think their most common mistakes are? I would imagine there's a few, but. Yeah. Um, I do know that um, a, a, a good founder is um, is not really trying to please their venture capitalist. Okay. Uh, a good founder is working to the good of the society through their product or their service. And um, and a good founder is uh, almost maniacally driven to do what they're doing. Mm. Uh, and a lot of their life has been focused on that or the opportunity has hit them so hard that they are... Um, are going to really dedicate their life to it. And, uh, and the, the mistakes that we've made as investors is um, to mistake the enthusiasm. Uh, 
because a good founder is enthusiastic about what they're doing, but a good salesperson can be enthusiastic about anything. Yeah. And if they're a good salesperson and they're not a good founder necessarily, um, that they could sell me one thing today and another thing tomorrow, but they, mm. uh, they're not there to build something of great value over a long, long period of time taking it one step at a time, building it one brick at a time. That is what an entrepreneur has to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's not an easy life. I remember um, my I brought my Draper University students over to Tesla when Elon was launching his the S car. Um, and it was a big, fun thing. He was doing a whole bunch of things. He brought the governor. He had a, a he's got a ribbon cutting and um, and I was one of the first five cars off the line and, uh, he, you know, and, and I got my car that day, mm. uh, but, I, but he allowed me to bring my students, uh, the Draper university students there. Yeah. And one of the students said, Mr. Musk, um, I'm, I want to be an entrepreneur. What would you recommend? And he looks at her. Mm. The funniest thing. He looks at her. He's totally exhausted. You know, he's put yeah. this whole thing together. He's 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 thinking about a hundred different things. Mm. And he looks at her and he says, "Don't do it." <laughs> <laughs> I, and I think it. it's good advice because yeah. a, a true entrepreneur won't take that advice. They'll do it no matter what. Yeah. And somebody who's a you know an, a startup tourist will will run for the hills and yeah that's exactly what you want that's great i love that that's um a really <clears throat> good point for us i think where we can sort of wrap up i think and um really helpful really really good this um interview and your thoughts and everything i'm so grateful that you've come on and great well uh, thank you martin it was a yeah. good a lot of good questions and uh and for your viewers, have them follow me on Twitter. Definitely. I'm at Tim Draper. And uh, yeah, let, uh, let me know if you're an entrepreneur, make sure that you contact me um, at uh, Tim at Draper.vc. Uh, but only, I don't want to see life stories. All I want to see right. are those business models. Absolutely. Oh, good. There you go. I was just about to ask you to do a little plug there. So you've done that. And uh, okay, thank you so great. much. I really appreciate it. I know you're a busy guy, so I really appreciate your time and uh, best of luck. And, um, you know, maybe we'll speak again soon. <laughs> thank you.